avascular planes of the pelvis. The avascular planes of the pelvis are potential spaces that are generally devoid of blood vessels and nerves. Access to the avascular spaces allows for safe and efficient gynecologic surgery. The objectives of our video are to review the structural anatomy and landmarks in six key avascular planes of the pelvis, the pararectal space, the paravesical space, the retropubic space or space of retius, the vesical vaginal space, the rectovaginal space, and the presacral or retrorectal space. For each space, we will discuss techniques for access and surgical dissection and review relevant safety concerns. The pararectal space can be entered by opening the sidewall peritoneum at the level of the round ligament parallel to the infundibulo-pelvic ligament. To open the space safely and efficiently, the connective tissue is spread horizontally using both hands in a swimming motion. The pararectal space is bordered by the cardinal ligament anteriorly, the rectum medially, and the internal iliac artery laterally. The pararectal space is opened and the ureter is isolated by using a push-spread technique in combination with a sweeping maneuver parallel to the course of the ureter. The classic water-under-the-bridge relationship between the uterine artery and the ureter may be exploited to locate and safely ligate the uterine artery at its origin from the internal iliac artery. The paravesical space is lateral to the bladder and separated from the pararectal space by the cardinal ligament posteriorly. The peritoneum overlying the medial umbilical ligament can be incised with monopolar energy to gain access to the paravesical space. Alternatively, as shown here, both the paravesical and pararectal spaces can be entered by starting the peritoneal incision at the level of the round ligament. The uterine artery, which divides the paravesical and pararectal space, is skeletonized using a combination of sweeping and push-spread maneuvers. The medial umbilical ligament is a landmark for the uterine artery and can be used as a handle to apply counter-traction to safely isolate the uterine artery. The retropubic space of retius lies between the pubic bone and bladder. The retropubic space is bordered posteriorly by the urethra and pubourethral ligaments. The space is entered by incising the peritoneum medial to the medial umbilical ligament by pulling the ligaments for counter-traction. The bladder can be retrograde filled with air or fluid to help delineate its borders during this dissection. Dissection close to the pubic bone should be avoided in order to prevent injury to the midline dorsal clitoral neurovascular bundle. Inferiorly, the veins of Santorini should be avoided. An aberrant obturator artery and vein may also be present in the retropubic space. The vesical vaginal space lies between the vagina and the bladder. The vesical vaginal space is easily and safely entered from the lateral aspect. The anterior leaf of the broad ligament is tented anteriorly and the vesical uterine fold is incised using the copotomy cup as a guide. While using a grasper to maintain gentle upward traction on the bladder, the monopolar shears push the connective tissue posteriorly and towards the bladder in a sweeping or wiping motion, pushing down against the endopelvic fascia. Short bursts of monopolar energy may be used when encountering small vessels during this dissection. It is essential to have the uterine manipulator pushed cephalad to deviate the bladder caudally. The uterus is midplane or slightly retroverted. Care should be taken to avoid lateral dissection where the bladder pillars and uterine arteries border the space. The rectovaginal space lies between the rectum and the vagina and is bordered laterally by the uterosacral ligaments. The cul-de-sac peritoneum is incised with short bursts of monopolar energy. The peritoneum is undermined using a push-spread technique. The uterosacral ligaments are landmarks for orientation as well as handles for counter-traction. The space is further opened using a push-spread technique and downward sweeping motion. The lateral approach is particularly useful when the space is obliterated in cases of endometriosis or adhesive disease. A uterine manipulator is used to maximally antivert the uterus and an instrument such as an EEA sizer can be inserted in the rectum to aid with visualization. During dissection between the rectum and uterosacral ligaments, care should be taken to avoid the middle rectal artery and vein. The presacral or retrorectal space is located between the rectum and sacrum. 
To enter the presacral space, the peritoneum overlying the sacral promontory is tented upward and monopolar energy is used to make a vertical incision. For optimal exposure, the sigmoid colon should be retracted to the left, which may require a stitch through the epiploic appendices anchored to the interior abdominal wall in the left upper quadrant. The connective tissue is brushed away using a gentle sweeping motion directed posteriorly and caudally. The left common iliac vein forms the left border of the presacral space. The right common iliac artery and ureter form the right border. And the hypogastric plexus, middle sacral artery and vein, and sacral venous plexus can be found in the center. In summary, knowledge of the avascular planes of the pelvis allows for safe and efficient gynecologic surgery. Access to the avascular pelvic spaces optimizes visualization by maximizing exposure and hemostasis while avoiding injury to nearby viscera, vessels, and nerves.